Well, good morning. Happy Tuesday. Happy garbage day. But besides that, happy birthday. I mean, it's my birthday today. Uh, I am turning 50. Never thought I'd turn 50. And for some of you, you're probably thinking, uh, you're still so young. And other ones are like, wow, that is ancient. If you were my kids, you'd be telling me how ancient I am. Um, but uh, this is a day of uh, celebration that I have survived. Uh, <laughs> No thankfulness to myself uh, for 50 revolutions uh, around the sun. And uh, now I get to celebrate uh, 50 years old, half a century. Uh, I got to be honest, I never thought I'd make it this long. If you knew how reckless and crazy I was as a teenager, I'm grateful I survived. But it's only by God's grace. Now I get to serve him as a pastor. Now, I want to share with you today on this day that I celebrate my birth, um, the prayer of Moses, uh, Psalm 90. It's one of my favorite psalms. I use it usually in our refresh class. We'll be doing that again come uh, October. But it's a great way to uh, kind of think about how we measure our days, how we judge our days, more so how we seek out to live our days. And Moses is a great example of this. I mean, this is a man who did not want to be a spokesperson for God. I mean, he kind of tried to get out as much as he could, just kind of like I was. And uh, he dealt with people who maybe were not always as uh, as willing to hear the, the message or follow simply. And I got to say, uh, throughout my ministry and my life, I've definitely encountered those as well. Uh, not present company excluded, of course. Um, but it's one of those things that this psalm gives us a perspective. And maybe because I'm turning 50 and because I am now uh, half that century, this, these words maybe take a little bit more uh, weight to my life. And so I'm going to share with you from Psalm 90, called A Prayer of Moses, the Man of God. From verse 1 and following. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you were God. You turn men to dust and say, Return, O children of man, for a thousand years in your sight, are but as a yesterday when it is past, or as a watch in the night. You sweep them away as with the flood. They are like a dream, like grass that is renewed in the morning. In the morning it flourishes and is renewed. In the evening it fades and withers. For we are brought to an end by your anger. By your wrath we are dismayed. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your presence. For all our days pass away under your wrath. We bring our years to an end like a sigh. The years of our life are 70 or even by reason of strength, 80. Yet their span is but toil and trouble. They are gone and we fly away. Who considers the power of your anger and your wrath according to the fear of you? So teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long? Have pity on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us, for, and for as many years as we have seen evil. Let your work be shown to your servants, and the, your glorious power to their children. Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us, and establish the work of our hands upon us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. Here ends the word of the Lord. Now, that psalm, if you read it, kind of starts off in a very dark way. I mean, uh, realizing our own mortality, realizing that our years are but just like a dust in the wind. I think there's a song that name, and I know Tim, if he's listening, will start singing Dust in the Wind. Uh, but the fact is, is that we are mortal. Our lives, 70 years, 80 of the strength, some might live to be 100, 120, I know is the limit that God set long ago. But all of them are but toil and trouble. So why is Moses such a pessimist? Well, because the optimism comes later in the psalm, in the prayer, recognizing where he is, what he's been through, what he's endured, what he's struggled with, his own issues of his body, of his age, of life in this sinful, corrupted world. He asked the Lord to give him his guidance, to give him presence, to bless and establish the work of his hands, and to guide him in his days, to teach him to teach Moses how to number his days aright so he might gain a heart of wisdom. And so I'm going to share with you a little bit of a reflection from, a, from an older uh, Lutheran Ministries one that says, you know, when we learn to number our days, it may seem like a strange path to wisdom. A pastor once said that keeping the reality of death in front of us brings us closer to the true meaning of life. There's a lot of truth can be said there. I mean, you know the zest of life when you jump out of an airplane, you realize you're about to die. 
uh, you realize when you think more and more about your mortality. For instance, you know, when my father was gravely ill, given just a few weeks to live, and I was only in my teens, I thought, oh no, what will ever happen? And suddenly it changed the way I looked at my relationship with him. It changed the way I dealt with him. I wasn't that stupid old spoiled brat or stubborn kid uh, as I'd been for the years before. No, suddenly I was valuing every moment, every minute I had with him and all that we can do to with together. And what was neat is that through those three weeks he was given to live, he thought, well, let's cash in some insurance and we'll go to Alaska. And if I don't survive, then you and your sister go to Alaska and enjoy it and remember me. If I do, then we go to Alaska together. And you know what? We did make it to Alaska together. I was so young, my sister was young, but we went in celebration that my dad was able to overcome that bout of cancer. Now, the author of Psalm 90 here, Moses, is considered this sentiment not just good for pondering, but ideal for the contemplation at the very center of communal worship. <laughs> See, Psalm 90 begins with a section of the Psalms that is traditionally used for liturgical worship. Maybe you didn't know that. And yet, instead of inspiring us with positivity, this psalm invites us with sobriety that brings life into a sharper focus. You know, when we realize our own mortality, or the mortality of those that we love, we don't want to waste time on other things. We want to get right to the heart of what life is all about. And maybe that's why we focus here, as Moses does, on the, you know, kind of, uh, temporary nature of life and how it's fleeting. No, maybe the two main things we need to focus on here are this. One, intimacy. Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us. And two, impact. Establish the work of our hands. You see, when we realize just how short our lives are, how much time we have, we start to think about our relationships with each other and how to appreciate and cherish and develop those. Right now, my kids, uh, both Abby and Ben, are looking for ways to come home to be able to spend more time with uh, Mr. Larry because he is so precious to them. That's what the reality of mortality does to us. Brings us back to that focus on intimacy. But then the second one, impact. Thinking about how the Lord will truly work through our lives to bring about his love, his salvation, his blessings to others, which then brings about an intimacy. See, this is really about a mission of a church, mission as Christians. That's why it's part of litur a liturgy, if you would, for worship. You see, when our, when our days are numbered, instinctively, the things that matter most rise to the surface. Those are the priorities. If you knew that what well, your own expiration date was, how might you prioritize your life in a radical and a new way? What might you put emphasis on and what might you not? Are there areas of relational intimacy that you like to see mended before it's too late? I guess I've talked to too many Christians who have then been faced with that. But also, how about the work of your hands? Have you made the impact in the world that you would hope to have? Do you think that the Lord is still able to use you? Well, allowing this psalm to guide our worship, our lives, gives us this opportunity with a sober contemplation of our own mortality to offer Jesus the deepest desires of our hearts. And then we recognize God's grace that we are redeemed by his sacrificial love to the fullest now our life here and throughout eternity takes on a, a whole, different, whole different focus. And we live our lives dedicated to him. And so doing, we can refocus. Refocus on what's most important and what's most meaningful in this life that we've been given. You see why I like this for my birthday. As you face another year, maybe you too will be doing this next year. Consider Psalm 90. Consider how the Lord might refocus you on your own mortality, but his blessing, so that you have two goals that become your priorities, intimacy and impact. I'm considering that right now as I look into this over the hill and down the hill and uh, over the, through, the, through the hills we go, whatever it might be but it, how the Lord might be able to use my life in my relationships and truly have an impact through me in this world. I look at my kids as they're growing up. I look at my family members and thinking, can I have a more intimate, can I have a better issue? Are there fences that need to be mended? Are there gaps that need to be bridged? And you know what? We might not have that much more time. So make the most of doing it now. And that's what I wanna to share today. So happy birthday, if your birthday's coming up. 
consider Psalm 90 and how as part of our liturgy, not only as an individual who's going to have a birthday, but also as our church, how we might refocus on what lies ahead. And one little plug, we have our Envision event, which will be taking place October 6th, that next Saturday after I come back. Please come and plan on being part of it. I know there's a sign-up sheet in the Welcome Center. There's not a lot of names signed up on it. Please do sign up if you can attend. We'd love it. We need the most number we can have from Galilee there. Newer members, older members, all different uh, backgrounds and all those things to be able to give input on what we are looking forward to doing as a congregation in the years ahead. It would give our leadership some assistance. It would give me some assistance to see what we see as a community because we are all together in this. We all support each other in this. And we all recognize the impact that we have to have together. You see, we are the family of Galilee. It's not just the pastor. It's not just the council. It's all of us. So consider how you might be able to help participate in this Envision event and to help give vision and focus because the Lord doesn't just reveal it to one or two. He, he brings it to all of us. And we can use your help in that regard. So plan and join us October, uh, Saturday, October the 7th at church. Is it October the 7th? I think it's October the 7th. Sorry, I'm thinking to myself. It's that Saturday, next Saturday. Uh, but with that being said, um, pray the Lord each day, how we might number our days aright, giving us a heart of wisdom, establishing the work of our hands, that he would do that for us. So let's close in prayer. Dear Jesus, what a precious gift that you laid down for us and giving your life on the cross. Please give us courage to move in the directions that you have placed on our hearts now. Grant that our lives would not be wasted, but that your glory would be evident in the way that we live and we love and we work each and every day. Help us to focus on the intimacy that we have with our congregation, with our families, with our coworkers, with our fellow students, and how to make the most of that so that we might not waste it, and Lord, help us to truly see the impact you desire us to have. No matter what our age, no matter what our vocation, that we would work together as the body of Christ the Galilee to truly impact this world in your name. So we ask this, Jesus, in your precious name. Amen. Well, have a wonderful day in the Lord. Uh, I'll be enjoying having a drink uh, and just relaxing a little bit, but I'll look forward to seeing you all. I missed you this last Sunday. Look forward to seeing you when we return. Have a wonderful day in the Lord. Know that I love you and aloha.